wife will kill me if we don't get into it. There's a baby calf born. How on earth did the Norman situation scripted, not scripted, done? How my wife, my wife's got to know. That's all she asked about. She only asked, she only cared about Norman. That's basically. Sorry, Norman. Ron, your your film project was reduced to Norman. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'll start. <laughs> Norman was Norman was an important part of the script, and and um, we had uh, actually a real cattle call for the casting of Norman. Okay. And so we're, we're, our offices were at Culver City Studios in Culver City, and a truck of calves pulled up, and we, we looked, and we were trying to pick Norman. And I saw this cow, this calf, with these incredible brown eyes, big brown eyes. I just... I fell in love. I was in love with this calf. I said, oh, that's, that's what I want. And the, what I didn't realize when I said that was that we needed like a new calf every week because they were growing so fast and they would get these horns and all of this stuff. Oh my gosh. It was so complicated and it wasn't calving season. And we had to get all the calves we could, um, have born during the production. So we kept having new calves born just uh, week after week. Yep, action. Let's I film see. it again, Billy. Fill it, grab, grab Norman. Let's go. Yeah. We got another Norman, Norman being born. <laughs> and, uh, but the, when we did the birthing scene, I had just seen a movie with Rip Torn and maybe Rip Torn and Kachata Farrell that where they actually delivered a real calf on, in the film. Okay. I'm, I'm blanking on the title of the film, but it was amazing. And I said, I went to, after I saw that movie, I said, I went to the producer, Irby Smith and said, I want, I want to make, I want to have this reality level. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have a real birth. Can we, can we figure out how to do a real birth on camera? They did it. Couldn't we do it? And, and then um, when we had a casting call for mothers, I took Billy into the truck to show him the cow that I really wanted. And he, he picked up the tail sort of the way he does in the movie and says, there are some things I won't do for money. <laughs> 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 and I uh, that story when I talked to the man, gosh, uh, it's, it's good. So, stuff. so uh, we got Can B Effects, which was Greg Nicotero, who is mm, yes, a, a superstar. Yes. He is one of the executive producers of The Walking Dead, the Walking Dead, yeah. And now, but at that time, he was um, a young makeup effects guy who was really into. Um, creating the most real uh, birth we could manage. And, and so we did actually use a, a live uh, calf, one of our Normans. Uh, he made, he, he put, got a, he made the rear end of a mother giving birth. And we put this uh, cylindrical tube into the mother so that, and then we, lathered up the uh, Norman in a, a bunch of uh, orange juice, kind of kind of like a Tremors uh, <laughs> blood, and, and just kind of squeezed it through this cylinder. And Billy actually was able to deliver a real calf out of this uh, uh, Greg Nic Nicotero uh, creation. It's and fantastic. it it's was, and, and one of the things it was complicated to get it. And we, we got, um, I, I can't remember what the problem was first. I think we were snowed out um, during filming. And so that became a problem and was one reason we couldn't complete the scene. And then we shot it in the studio in Santa Fe, mm -hmm. built a set for, where we were going to uh, to recreate that place, and then 
uh, when we were over Billy's shoulder going toward Jack Palance, he did an ad lib that was so funny about his losing his wristwatch. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so we didn't have him on camera doing it and we didn't have time to turn around and do it again. So that was the last shot we did back in Culver City when we were shooting on the stage on Culver City. The last shot we did at two in the morning was Billy uh, delivering the calf again, the third time uh, and where he, we got that uh, wristwatch shot. It was a gift. <laughs> it was a gift. Uh, so a YouTuber insider joke um, is that uh, Soul Assassin points out that Loki and Pops will move some cows. We have to include Mexican Iron Man and Zero, which we're, yeah, we probably are a little outlandish, miscellaneous characters. So yeah, we would definitely represent a film well if we did try to uh, do a uh, City Slickers uh, 4 or 3 or 4, whatever it would be. So uh, The chat was on it, Ron, by the way. The film that you're thinking of with Rip Torn is called Heartland. Yes, Heartland. What they're all over it. They're all over it. That, was, all over it. that so, was amazing. Amazing film. Yes. And an amazing thing. So complicated. I think they got up in the middle of the night to get that calf scene done because they had to do it when the calf was ready or when it was coming out. Uh, Chris, a prosthetic cow giving birth that has to be at first. I don't know, but it is a fascinating story. And I actually, I'm not shocked that there's like this hybrid of efforts because it is so difficult to work with animals anyway, let alone uh, cows. Yeah. Uh, but I will say... Uh, Norman with those eyelashes. Oh boy, is it cows are cows are killer, man. Cows are killer. I love my guns, but survival is more than just heavy weaponry. Monster hunting requires imagination. And with a little Yankee know-how, even the most common household items can become useful tools. Case in point, pantyhose. Now, before you go thinking I'm several rounds shy of a full mag, hear me out. Monster hunting can require a great deal of walking. A pair of pantyhose worn under your regular socks can help prevent blisters. Or should you inexplicably run short of ammo, the elasticity of pantyhose makes them the ideal choice for a makeshift slingshot. Load your projectile between the legs. Grab the crotch, pull back gently, and shoot your load. Load delivered. Should you encounter windy conditions on the hunt, pantyhose makes a great dust mask. Should you be fortunate enough to bag a monster and want to get your trophy home, pantyhose can be used as a handy tie-down in the absence of bungee cord or twine. <laughs> Finally, if you wish to preserve your kill as a future source of protein, stuff your pantyhose with graboid flesh and hang it to dry in the sun. Graboid jerky. Nothing like it. Mmm. <laughs> Belly up to your local retailer and ask for them by name. Burt's. Bullseye brand survivalist pantyhose. Tell them Gummer sent you.